he's pushed to training because they probably don't want to put him in, you know, make sure that he's not in charge of anybody in combat because he's already gotten multiple SEALs killed. He's gotten multiple guys injured and he, he made a mess of the battlefield that he was on. So Jocko, you know, gets for, you know, pushed to training. He's doing this while out on active duty. So he's got this side deal with a known drug felon, you know, correct, you know, connected with crime families. And this is, you know, and he starts pushing contracts or trying to get contracts to his gym. And this is where they find out that, um, you know, as far as he, he starts running into some problems. So, and none of, of the SEALs that, you know, call me and talk to me are saying that what I'm saying is false. I have not had one SEAL talk to me and say what I'm saying is false. Um, I've had a little bit of pressure and pushback from some in the community not to air out our dirty laundry. Jocko Willing is getting kicked out of the teams due to contract ethics fraud. Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome back to Beyond the Beret. I wanted to do a follow-up with Eric um, based on the uh, podcast we did last week. If you haven't seen it, um, make sure you go check it out. It released uh, this past Saturday. Um, it's doing pretty good so far. So I wanted to follow up because um, I've been speaking with Eric uh, off scene. And it's one of those things, every time we have these type of conversations, there's always an end state, right? You know, being... Um, at the very tip of the spear, whether it's uh, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, combat controllers, Marine, like when you operate at that level, um, when we have these conversations, the intent is to hopefully get the other person to sit down and have a conversation openly, right? So we can resolve it. This isn't an open loop that just keeps on going. The intent here is to hopefully get these individuals to um, sit down with us and talk about, you know, what, what we've mentioned. And if it's not true, then tell us to our face that, hey, this is not accurate, um, quit or just own it so we can hopefully uh, get the community better, right? So Eric, I appreciate you coming back on and following up with me. I'm just curious as to uh, feedback you've been getting and how everything is going for you. Hey, Jay, thanks for having me on again as far as, as you can see from a lot of the comments uh, that um, a lot of people already knew you know, what I'm saying is to be the truth. And they've gotten on there and they commented just like, yep, I was there. I saw exactly what uh, was set or what was happening. And now the public is starting to put all the pieces together. Um, I need you to, you know, the people to remember, you know, this all started with Roberts Ridge with Tim Szymanski. And, you know, by him, you know, a guy who had a pretty messed up career most of his life and pushed, you know, his guys to try to land on top of an X. Uh, on top of a mountain to make a name for himself. And um, and because of his bad decisions and leader, you know, as a leader, he put these guys, you know, on top of that mountain. And then they covered it up for years. When they covered up for years, as far as the real heroes were not known. And now, since that has been public, as far as now that there was a drone feed that came out and exposed it, and they couldn't lie about it anymore. And we found out that John Chapman was really the hero that day. Um, it's kind of, you know, shed a light on the SEAL teams. It's like, okay, what else is not exactly right out there? And then you had Matt Kubler go on to the anti-podcast and he was talking to a whole bunch of other SEALs and he stood up for his high school brother, uh, his high school friend, because Job's parents knew something was wrong with that story and uh, didn't know exactly what was right, but knew they weren't getting the truth from the SEAL community. And then, so he started investigating it and I was just like, well, shoot, here's, you know, I was fighting it, you know, inside internally the whole time I was active, you know, with my IG complaints and, you know, and calling out these people uh, while I was active, doing the quiet professional thing, thinking our, my community was gonna clean it up and fix it. And, you know, so many years have passed where it didn't get cleaned up and more and more, you know, accidents have happened. And then I see the, what really happened on Roberts Ridge and the same guys I was calling out back then actually were lying to us way back in the past. And I'm talking about Tim Szymanski. Um, and so when I see, you know, a non-SEAL get up and basically have a whole bunch of SEALs, t you know, talking to him. And then I see all these books that came out, you know, as far as um, Code Over Country, Alpha, 
as far as Lone at Dawn, all these books, you know, you know, exposing us as a community of liars. I was just like, you know, why, why do they have to do it? It should, you know, we've been trying to do it internally for a long period of time. And just like, and now you got these external, you know, people that are, you know, investigative reporters that are calling us out and there's no seals stepping up and, and basically saying, Hey, what you're saying is true. Unfortunately, unfortunately it's true. And we need to address it. It's hundred percent. We need to address it. Big Navy and, you know, top officials in Congress need to say, what the hell is going on with the Navy special warfare in the seal community? And, you know, if I got to be the face for this and I got to be the one that's, you know, out there doing it, I, I feel it's my duty to bring truth to what is said out there and for us to start cleaning our home. And that's why I'm out here, you know, doing this. Now, as far as feedback from uh, the guys that are currently on active duty um, or guys that have retired, have you heard from any of those guys a uh, feedback that actually matters to you? Have you heard from anybody good, bad or indifferent? Oh, yeah. Since I've done my podcast, many uh, my teammates have reached out to me. Some of them knew exactly what I was saying to be true, and I'm glad that I'm out there saying it. Some only had like, you know, bits and pieces to it. And they now they're putting, you know, what I you know, have exposed to what they known to be, you know, facts themselves. And they're just like, oh, now I'm getting the full picture. And there are some that didn't know much about it, but appreciate me sharing the truth. I've had a, a lot of positive uh, uh, feedback and support of what I'm doing. And so it's, you know, it's been, it's been great. We have this saying in the teams that um, you earn your trident every day and, um, and you don't earn your trident by covering things up. And I feel like, you know, I'm in a, a, a different battle, but it, it's another battle. And I'm, you know, I'm battling to make sure that no more senseless deaths happen in the SEAL teams. Um, and that uh, these bad actors are identified so that the American public doesn't get duped by somebody just because they have a trident on their chest. And they think that because they have that trident on their ch chest that they think they're a trustable person. And uh, it's these people are easily identified once you understand what you're looking for. So the, the feedback's been great and uh, the support's been great. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be doing it, you know, what I'm doing. And uh, it's funny because I, you know, get up in the morning, look yourself in the mirror. And I know there's, you know, cowards out there that uh, look at themselves in the mirror and they know exactly who they are. And uh, when I look at myself in the mirror, I, I, you know, I think I'm doing the right thing. And that's all that matters, Eric. And I'm glad you say that because at the end of the day, um, when you have the character, the integrities and all these other things that we stand for as men in uniform, doing the right thing, you know, doesn't stop just because you're no longer in active duty, right? Um, it's still a community. And I guarantee you if, at least on my end, if guys from the Tungo Tungo incident were out here, um, you know, selling books and making movies and painting a narrative that, that wasn't accurate, as a Green Beret, I would have something to say about that because I couldn't look myself in the mirror and know that, hey, I'm on social media, I'm in the space, and I have folks that are from my community doing this out here, right? So that's that's my way of 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 trying to provide an example that the audience will understand is yeah, I've talked about Tango Tango, um, but no one from that incident is out here um, doing anything that that's not right for the community, right? So that's how I like to look at it. And I know the audience has a lot to say, Eric. So if you don't mind, I went down there and I grabbed a couple of comments from the audience, ones that, you know, have gardener, have garnered the most likes. And I just want to, um, you know, just just you know i uh, talk about them and just get your perspective and then we'll jump right into what you have to say as far as the ad uh, additional information that you found out um so the first one that i want to go over this one has over you know close to you know 500 likes and it says K 
Cat Williams was, wasn't was kidding when he said the truth is going to come out this year. If you don't know, Cat Williams is a comedian. He he just did a, a podcast on um, another platform, you know, 65 million views, and it was just him shedding light on Hollywood and some other negative things that are going on back there. Um, and I, I like this one because it goes to show that the truth is the truth, regardless of who you are, um, you know, if you don't think it's never going to come out, that's not accurate at all, especially in this community. And if you're in the spotlight, it's going to come out. That's why, like on my platform, like I, I tell everybody, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly. Right. I'm not painting myself as, you know, somebody that I'm not. And I, I tell them straight up like, hey, you know, like when I came in, just like many of us in special operations, we went in with the notion of what was what it was supposed to be. We go through the transition of making the bad mistakes, you know, on my end, whether it was steroids, you know, getting fired a couple of times and bouncing back from it, having an ND on the range. Like I've mentioned all those things and I was still able to retire at the highest level. So there's so much there to unpack that the new generation could could learn from it. And I hit on all those mistakes and I show them how I was able to come out of it. And I think that's important when you're out here um, and when people see you, they want to they need to know that you're, you, you're, you're a human being and you've made mistakes and you've bounced back from it. That's the whole process that is special operations. So what do you think about that when it, when, uh, in, in regards to the truth coming out and so on and so forth, Eric? I think he, uh, you know, a lot, whoever made that first comment hit the nail on the head right there as far as that the truth's going to come out in 2024. I think there's a lot of uh, things that's happening, in, you know, within our society right at this time that's exposing a whole bunch of stuff. And that kind of brings up just like, you know, why now, Eric? Why are you coming out now? And that kind of goes into, you know, as far as when I learned more about Joe Price's death and that you got this non-SEAL speaking up and, you know, and challenging the SEALs. And I've been doing it internally for so long. Uh, how can I stand back and not basically... Uh, do very similar things because I got firsthand knowledge and I got a lot of, you know, teammates that are still in or who were in and that, uh, that saw a lot of the same things that I did or saw things that I didn't see, but it, you know, have told me about them. So I think it's great that we're having this conversation and that we're exposing it so that more of the American public doesn't get duped or scammed by, you know, some of my fellow teammates that don't live up to the SEAL code, didn't live up to the SEAL code when they were active duty, and now are profiting off of the good deeds of good SEALs, not what they did, or how what they got accomplished, but what other SEALs did, and they're still in their valor, and they're still in their honor. So I think it's great that we're having this conversation, and I think it's a, that the truth, like you said, is the truth. Yeah. Uh, another comment that I want to hit on, this one got close to 300 likes. As the saying goes, never meet your heroes. See, this one I think is is two sided because again, I I want to meet my heroes, but I want to meet them in in their entirety, right? The complete individual, the good, the bad, the ugly. Because not everybody that's out here, um, as far as heroes goes, got to that point without going through some trials and tribulations, right? That's who makes them who they are. You know, some of these young guys that 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 call me and ask me for advice and that sees me as this figure like i i need like i show them like hey i didn't get to the point where i am right now by not going through all of these things right so when they do meet me and they ask me these questions i'm like yes you got to understand this is a process you're gonna go through x y and z you got to figure out how to overcome it like you and i then become these mentally tough individuals you know by waking up in the morning and just saying oh man i'm this no you have to go through some things right so I would almost say, yes, you can meet your heroes, but just make sure you know who your hero is and what is in their background, right? Because we all, you know, in this community have gone through trials and tribulations, right? What makes us who we are is the fact that we're able to overcome them and be, you know, the person that we are today. Like, what are your thoughts on that, Eric? Honestly, you know, before I came on your podcast, you know, I was uh, I did a little research and I was just like, here's a guy who's standing up and owning everything he's done and uh, is an example for a lot of guys to follow. And so that's why 
you know, one of the reasons why I came on your podcast, because I know that you're going to stand up for the right thing. And so when you, you know, that's what a hero does, you know, and the, most people don't get to meet you or, or, or you know, have interactions. You're, but when you find out that your hero is not who he says he is, and if you just start peeling back, you know, the onion just a little bit, you know, and, and I'm talking about Jocko and, you know, his cronies there. Um, once you start peeling back that onion, you'll see that it's it's got some rot to the core of it. And all you, all the American public has to do is open up their eyes a little bit, look for the you know the signs, and you know and make your own decision. And as far as it doesn't take a, but a little bit of investigation to know what the truth is, and and I'll be showing you know some of that later on in the podcast exactly who he teams up with and who he, you know and how his career went and things along those lines, so that the information they'll have so that they can make their own decision about it. You don't have to trust what I'm saying. You don't have to believe me, but you can't deny the facts and, you know, and I'll be able to, you know, expose those facts. All right. Um, another comment was this one is coming from a, a Marine uh, that was um, in Ramadi and the message just simply state that I was in Ramadi doing 2006 and I can confirm some of what is mentioned in the letter from the 38 company xo and that one's got uh about 100 likes um so again guys and the, I've, I've gotten several of these from guys that that have been there so if there's truth to to this then i think we owe it to the fallen to look into this right what are your thoughts on that eric yeah i think it's great that uh there's marines out there and there's you know and there's other forces that were there in the area at the same time that they witnessed everything that I'm saying and they're confirming everything and they need to do that more just so that the American public doesn't get scammed by these scammers as far as these guys that are living off a false narrative that they were these, you know, ridiculous war heroes and that they made such an impact on the battlefield. Um, and when they, in reality, their actions not only got two of my teammates killed, and, you know, a couple others, you know, seriously injured uh, and ones that died later because of their injuries. Um, but they also got Marines and other service members killed and that this needs to be out there so that th the American public don't follow or believe these false narratives that they're, they're painting this picture of. And the only reason they have any type of, you know, following or notoriety is because they wrote, a, you know, a false book in the, about, you know, extreme leadership when they didn't do any of the things that they claimed they did in the book, you know, on the battlefield. And they were the exact opposite of what we would want a, of a SEAL leader out there. And so it, it's, it's like, you know, with Chris Kyle, everybody knows that Chris Kyle, uh, was a murderer, liar, you know, as far as he lied about hitting Jesse Venture. Everybody knows that Chris Cowell's, you know, history is, 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 is crap. But what you don't realize, or maybe what they didn't realize, is that you don't have Chris Kyle without Jocko. You don't have Jocko without Chris Kyle. They are two of the uh, categories. As far as Jocko, 100% knew exactly what Chris Kyle was doing. He was warned multiple different times by multiple different people. Hey, putting him out there, he's killing innocent people. You're making, you know, you're making the situation worse. The guys that you're sending out with them, you're putting it out in harm's way because they know that you're going out on daylight patrols and daylight, you know, sniper ops on top of, you know, houses. They know now that you got your Punisher patch and they're e you're easily identifiable, they watch when you leave the gate. This is all intel that Jocko had. They know when you're leaving the gate. They know where you're going. They're trying to set up on you. Stop doing this stupid daylight patrols, trying to get a body count and get Chris Kyle off the, the battlefield because you are, you're hurting us as um, a battlefield, you know, you know, on the battlefield, you know, in that area, you're making the situation worse. You're making more enemies than you're removing because you're shooting innocent people or he's shooting innocent people. So Jocko knew this. He pushed him out there anyway. And he decides that it's more important for him to get a body count than it is to um, do the right thing and basically get these guys off the battlefield. Now, um, 
do you know when he was pushing out his guys during the day? Did you know if there was any mandate in place by the um, Vata Space owner saying that, hey, all U.S. forces will conduct missions during the day? Because like you mentioned, we do on the night. Um, or was that a personal choice? Because I just want to make sure that 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 we're um, being accurate. Because I know there's there's been times where the battle space owner will say, "Hey, due to X, Y, and Z, all you know uh, units within my battle space, you will only conduct operations during the day." Do you know if that was something that was going on, or was it a choice uh, by him to go out during the day when they could easily done things at night? Because you're right, we do things at night. Um, but if battle space owner is telling us, "Hey," you won't then that changes things well you know if the battle let's say let's say let's give him the benefit of the doubt uh if you know he was said hey we need you out there during the day doing this um it's still his responsibility when he gets intel coming in to say hey you know i'm getting intel from higher you know from from national level, you know, organization, because SEAL Team 6 was in the area and they were warning him saying, hey, they know what you're doing, stop doing it. And he said, you know, and he tells them, he goes, screw you, I'm taking it to the enemy, I'll do what I want. He didn't give a crap about his guys' lives. He didn't say, hey, I'm ordered to do this. He didn't say, I'm being forced to do this. He didn't run it up his chain of command as far as within Naval Special War Warfare saying, hey, I'm getting told to do this. This is not our mission. We're not supposed to be doing this, but I'm, I'm getting this pressure to do this. No, he made these decisions himself. He pushed his guys out there. He was getting all types of feedback not to do it. So it's, you know, I find it hard to believe. And it just, you know, when, and I've run into it myself as far as, I, you know, I went to Iraq three different times. I went to Afghanistan three different times. I did a Neo in library. I, I, I've been on the battlefield and I know that we get a lot of leadway to do what's right as far as we don't get questions, a lot of stuff on a lot of things. Um, and we, you know, and we sometimes we think we're untouchable and we can do whatever we want to do. And it's up to the SEAL leaders, you know, to have the enough experience to know what's a strategic slash important mission and what's not and what to turn things down and when not or when to do certain things. And he chose to do the wrong thing multiple different times after multiple warnings. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Thanks for answering that, Eric. Um, we'll hit one one last comment, and then we'll jump right into the information that you have today. Um, so this one came from um, another uh, YouTube uh, user, and he just state, this is one of those interviews where Eric needs to talk to Jocko on camera and us, the viewers, need to see how this plans out. Now, like I mentioned earlier, like I'm, I'm always welcome to other individuals coming on and having a conversation mainly because that's how we handle business, right? Um, whether it's behind closed doors, which you tried doing while you were in, that didn't work out. And now we're in the space that they're in. Is that something you would be opposed to having a Marcus Luttrell or a Jocko come on? and then just have these conversations? No, not at all. It'd be nice that they're actually put under that type of scrutiny and, uh, and have to answer for some of these type of uh, actions that they actually did on the battlefield. And that'll probably, you know, once if they did do that, it'd probably encourage a lot of good SEALs to say, okay, now, now I'm coming out myself. Because, so I would hope they would do it. it would, it's encouraging to me if they would. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, let this be an invitation, uh, whether it's Marcus, Marcus Luttrell or Jocko, if you guys want to come on and and speak with Eric, um, either call him a liar or expand on things. Um, I think we owe it to those who have come before us, whether they're deceased or those that'll come that'll going to come ahead of us, right? Especially since we're out here and they they look at us and they listen to us and they hold on to our every words because they want to be like us. Um, I think it's the right thing to do, right? Um, with all that said, Eric, if you don't mind, we'll jump right um, into why you are back on today, which is you had some additional information that you wanted to share based on what we did before. Um, folks have reached out to you and um, uh, some new information has come to light. So if you don't mind, please take it from there. Yeah. Well, well since uh, 
I've had other, you know, since going on these two different podcasts, I've had uh, other team guys reaching out to me and providing more information and, um, and, you know, exposing more of the things that are, that, that I wasn't, didn't know about. So it's been a great response from my community. Um, I've had a little bit of pressure and pushback from some in the community not to air out our dirty laundry. I keep seeing SEALs and other service members die needlessly because of, you know, people are afraid uh, that exposing these mess ups and these, you know, guys that are living off this false persona is going to embarrass us. And so, you know, you know, with airing out, let me just talk about airing out our, our dirty laundry. You know, remember, I tried to do this in house, you know, internally with an IG complaint, I didn't want to air out our dirty laundry. But it's, it's taken, you know, many years for some of this stuff to come to light. And some of it only came to light because of, you know, pred feeds and stuff like that. There were SEALs that knew all about, you know, Roberts Ridge before that pred feed fell out. They know, you know, they don't talk about, you know, what a great warrior, you know, Fifi was, you know, Neil Roberts. And, you know, you know, he, you know they say they fell out of the back of the helicopter and, um, but when he fell out, it was only from like five or 10 feet and it was in three foot of snow. And so he fought with both his weapons by himself for a, a good period of time. And, uh, and, you know, won a silver star over his actions that, you know, is there's a pred feed of all that stuff. Why don't they talk about that as far as what a hero he was? Um, because that exposes that they landed on the X and they did something stupid. So as far as, uh, by, by noting what Fifi did, you know, kind of exposes some of their, you know, misdeeds. And I'm getting off on it, you know, a little bit of a tangent, but I'm going to get now get to the Jocko side of the things. So as I hear more stories about people getting hurt, you know, we just had the two seals die out in the Red Sea. And, you know, why did, you know, and what's come to light is that they didn't have the proper training to do that operation, which is one of our bread and butter operations that we do. They didn't have the right flotation. One guy falls in, he's starting to drown. And the other guy jumps in to try to help him, which is not our SOP. That's the SOP. It's the second boat that's in trail that picks up anybody that falls in the water. So because that second guy didn't have the proper training, he did what he thought was right and, and it was correct. And he jumped in trying to save his buddy and he drowned too. So we end up with two seals at the bottom of the Red Sea um, and, and dead because of improper training and a SEAL commander that was out there when they tried to abort, they wanted to abort it because of whatever reason, and he, they were ordered to do it again, just like Roberts Ridge. So we have, con we have in just like in Red Wings, as far as we got consistently failures of leadership, pushing their guys to do something they shouldn't be doing. And, uh, and then, you know, multiple different times it's a cover up. This time I'm not standing by letting this get covered up. So, you know, it's, and that's why I'm bringing it out in the public as far as so that those gold star families that had their two sons die or husbands or fathers die because of they were put in a situation that they shouldn't have been put into and they weren't trained properly for it, that they have the ammunition to basically hold people accountable and they should be held accountable. So, you know, most of the emails I receive are very encouraging. Tell me to stay strong, keep fighting, you know, with amplifying information. And none of, of the SEALs that, you know, call me and talk to me are saying that what I'm saying is false. I have not had one SEAL talk to me and say what I'm saying is false. But what they have said is basically, hey, you know, airing out our dirty laundry you know, makes us all look bad. It makes us all look like liars and killers. And I was just, you know, and so it, it, they're telling me it's hurting their, their personal businesses and they don't want to be perceived as that. So if we don't do this, if I don't call this out and, you know, we end up with this happening time and time again, it keeps happening over and over. And how many deaths have to happen to my teammates or to other you know, service members, you know, uh, before we, we ourselves are going to clean our house. So I'm sorry that it's going to hurt our reputation. I'm sorry that it's going to make some of us look bad, but it's just like in, you know, with the big Navy, when they had the fat Leonard, 
you know, situation. And I don't know if you know about the fat Leonard thing, but he's basically, he was bribing a bunch of Naval officers and, you know, and it basically by the end of it, the Navy held a whole bunch of people accountable and basically, um, prosecuted them. And it didn't make the Navy look bad. It made the Navy look like fi finally somebody's, cl you know, cleaning up and, you know, and making sure this type of stuff doesn't happen. Well, it's a little bit worse in our community because it's, you know, it's not an outside entity. It's an inside entity that I'm fighting against. It's my fellow, my fellow teammates that have been covering up some of this stuff or know about it that haven't spoken out about it or worse yet, the guys that are perpetrating it and that are living off of this false persona and, and they are deceiving. Uh, they are, you know, basically duping the American public of somebody that are, you know, they're portraying somebody they are not. And the American public has been fooled and duped because of it. So remember, you know, as far as Jocko, you know, basically he's got Chris Kyle on the battlefield and basically all this shenanigans are happening and every, you know, getting exposed. And he, um, when he, Basically, they, you know, they started looking at this because, you know, they can't sweep a lot of it underneath the rug. So now Jocko, you know, who claims to be this great war hero, you know, or, you know, great successful leader on the battlefield, uh, he comes back. You know, the normal if you ha if you had a good or uh, highly successful, you know, deployment as a task unit commander, your next step is like an XO of a SEAL team. And then your next step is basically the CEO of a SEAL team. So that's what, you know, the normal progression of people that want to be career NSW, you know, warfighter and officer, you know, in the SEAL teams. Instead, he's pushed their training. He's pushed their training because they probably don't want to put him in, you know, make sure that he's not in charge of anybody in combat because he's already gotten multiple SEALs killed. He's gotten multiple guys injured and he, he made a mess of the battlefield that he was on. So Jocko, you know, gets for you know, push their training. So he, you know, Jocko sees the writing on the wall that he's never going to be an XO. He's never going to be a commanding officer. So he says, okay, what, you know, so I got a couple more years before I can retire. So what am I going to do to basically after I get out of the SEAL team? So him and Brian Sargent start a gym. It's called Victory Gym. And it, they also start uh, action management consulting uh, both the, they start both of these companies while they're on active duty. Now, both Brian, you know, Sergeant and Jocko are in charge of training on the West Coast. So they can kind of push um, where some of these contracts go to. So they start this gym. And who do you think they start the gym with? Who is a money man? They start the gym with a guy named um, God um, Mar Manino. Um, Paul Joe Manino, who was indicted on drug uh, crimes as far as in racketeering. And um, he was convicted and sent to federal prison. After he gets out of prison, he uh, comes to San Diego where he got in trouble for some contract fraud, you know, there in San Diego. And then he starts this MMA gym with Jocko and Sargent. To my knowledge, this is Jocko's first um, time running a business and he's doing this while out on active duty. So he's got this side deal with a known drug felon, you know, correct, you know, connected with crime families. And this is, you know, and he starts pushing contracts or trying to get contracts to his gym. And this is where they find out that, um, you know, as far as he, he starts running into some problems. So in every leadership book I've ever read, when you start a business, you know, the first thing you want to do is surround yourself with the best, highly qualified, high, good character people, people that you, you know, the culture of your organization is going to be a positive one. So he surrounds himself with a known drug dealer and felon. So, you know, he's already failed on the battlefield. Now he's basically starting a business with a convicted felon and, you know, they say, what's the saying? Birds of a feather flock together, you know, as far as just, and I'll show you, you know, you know, this guy's record. And so that the American public can pull it up themselves and know exactly who Jocko and Brian go into uh, get in bed with. Now that they're in bed with them and they're in control of, you know, uh, contracts, 
they start pushing, you know, contracts to his own gym, which is, you know, obviously an ethical violation, you know, and maybe even criminal or whatever. And so not only is he, you know, in bed with the wrong people and he wants to push contracts and get his guys training at his gym and be around these, you know, have these young frogmen around these convicted type felon drug dealers, you know, he's exposing our guys to the wrong characters. Then there was an offsite, you know, NSW training uh, conference in, in Chicago where uh, Laura Larkin, who is in charge of a lot of military contracts and NSW, um, basically says, Jocko Willing is getting kicked out of the teams due to contract ethics fraud. He's, she says this in front of hundreds of people and that he is barred from any future NSW contracts because of this. So now Jocko is basically figured out that, you know, what he's done and he's basically being shamed and pushed, you know, out of the teams. And now it's, you know, so now he's just like, okay, so Jocko has been figured out and now he, he can't control contracts going where they are. So he's, you know, what the other saying, you can't change the zebra stripes or whatever, you know, he's just like, it's, it's apparent to everybody that's in my community, like, okay, he's going away. So, you know, so he retires in 2010. 2010, he founds Echelon Front. And then, um, so Jocko's been, you know, you know, comes out with, uh, what's it called? Survivor, Survivology or something like that. And, uh, and guess who another key member on that board, you know, that is one of his key guys, Marcus Luttrell. So, you know, here goes that birds of a feather flock together. You know, people that have been dishonest and deceiving the U.S. public, you know, for a long period of time. Who does he get, you know, on there? So he's already, you know, failed on the battlefield. He failed it at, you know, running a training organization. He's failing on who he's picking, you know, to be business partners with and, you know, what he's trying to do. So it's obvious, you know, to the, you know, the SEAL team members that I know that Jocko has never lived up to the code of a, of a good seal and that he's only profit. The only thing he's been able to profit off of is basically deceiving the U S public. And when he wrote the book, basically extreme leadership with Leif Babin, another guy who was noted, you know, as far as in that Marine letter of that Marine XO who talked directly to him saying, Hey, your guys are doing this. It's, it's, you know, you're causing all these issues for us. And, and, and he, the culture that Jocko fostered was fuck you. I'm going to do what we want to do. And they didn't care about other people getting hurt. Now, um, just to add some clarity for the audience. So, a contracting officer, right? So in my case, right before I retired, I was a first sergeant um, over at the schoolhouse. And my counterpart was a major, and he was the contracting officer for the entire company and the, um, uh, it's uh, essentially the entire battalion, right? So he had three different companies under him um, and he managed everything contracts, meaning he would receive uh, you know, uh, bids, and then he would figure out the best vendor, and then he would assign those contracts to those vendors, right? Um, in the scenario that that you're given is as it's as if my counterpart, that company commander, he had his own business, and as he's getting these requirements from the companies, he's pushing those requirements to his own company. And essentially pocketing or receiving the money uh, for those services, right? And that is unethical when it comes to contracts, right? Uh, the the contracting officer cannot play favoritism, nor can he assign contracts to his own company, his own LLC. That is uh, unethical in the eyes of the government. Is that um, what you're saying, Eric? hundred percent exactly what I'm saying, Jay, is that uh, I don't know if he was pushed to training or he chose to go there to be able to control that type of uh, 
money that was going certain, you know, to certain locations. And that's a problem that we have throughout the SEAL teams, believe it or not. There's more of that going on. And that's some of the stuff that I was, uh, my IG complaint was against. And gotcha, so that's gotcha. what I was, I was fighting that the whole time I was in when I saw this unethical stuff that was going on and I reported it up my chain multiple different times and uh, only to have nothing done. And, um, and, and because of the, because of these guys do that and they push contracts to either themselves or, you know, their friends, you know, we end up, instead of the best contractor being chosen or the best piece of equipment being chosen and our war fighters being better prepared and, you know, and having more success on the battlefield because of those decisions, we end up with lesser training and lesser better equipment because they are, their objective is to make money off the situation, not what's in the best interest of the war fighters that are on the ground. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Um, uh, so now, like you were mentioned, they got whiffed of it. They pushed them out. Uh, please continue on what you were saying. I think you were talking about um, um, Echelon, Echelon Front and uh, Leif Babin and them writing a book together. So yeah, that I interrupted you. So yeah, that brings up a good point. And there, a lot of people say, well, why aren't these other people, um, you know, calling them out like I am? Why are they got so many good people that are on there, you know, on his podcast and never say anything like this? Well, some of them participated in, you know, some of the things overseas that they're not proud of. So, you know, within the SEAL community, we have um, a lot of, we have some suicides. And some of those suicides are not suicides. You know, there's no, there is no doubt in my mind that Joe Price did not kill himself. And unfortunately, you know, his father, you know, like I said earlier, as far as Matt Kubler, you know, was investigating this and he brought stuff that I did not know. I, I knew Joe Price personally. When I heard it, I was just like, there's no way this guy committed suicide. And I just did, wasn't over there at that time when it happened. But I know that, you know, there's no way a shot could go off inside that building that nobody would not hear. Everybody would have heard that shot. So it was a suppressed weapon for sure that killed Job Price. And he didn't kill him. And it wasn't his own gun that did it. And so that's, there's a lot of suicide that, you know, I can tell you were not suicides. There are other suicides that are legitimate. And some of those suicides are because people like Jocko, Chris Kyle, they were witnessed and they participated in things that they're not proud of. And they didn't call it out then. Then they come back to normal society and they're looking at their kids and they're looking at their kids riding bikes and they're looking at their families walking down the street. And they know that some of their comrades or some of them participated in, you know, in doing things that they're not very proud of. And they got this moral damage inside and they've been fighting with it and fighting with it. And they just, and they, you know, have a hard time dealing with it and they don't know how to get it off their chest. Well, this is, this is me reaching out to you and I'm reaching out to Marcus too. Marcus, you're going to become a much happier person with yourself when you come clean and when you expose it, because there's no more weight on your chest when you expose the truth and you say, okay, I did these bad things and, and I'm sorry for them and I won't do those things again. And I'm going to try to make sure other people don't fall into the same thing that I fell into. So to all my SEAL brothers out there that participate in something they're not happy about, as far as realize that some of you got into a culture and let's, you know, let me back up a little bit. And the culture sometimes starts right at buds. So let's look at, you know, as far as um, Kyle Mullins, as far as what that exposed, as far as he was at buds and he was having, you know, great success getting through it. Uh, but he was fighting with, you know, an internal battle with himself, whether he was going to do steroids or not. And he was talking this over with his brother and, you know, and his mom. And, you know, and so he was on the fence about doing it, but he knew that the instructors were only letting guys get through that were basically on the program. So he was just like, you know, do I make it look like I'm on the program? You know, as far as on steroids, because the instructors are, you know, 
you know, part of the problem. They're basically the ones that are pushing it. So if you're not part of that little clique or part of what, you know, that false brotherhood and, you know, and if I was a young frog man and I showed up at Bud's or a, 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 a potential young frog man, I wanted to be one. And I showed up at Bud's and my instructors were saying, Hey, this is what it takes, you know, to be a fucking warrior. And, you know, and this is what it takes. Would I have fell victim to it? Yeah. Would have fell victim to it. And I would have gotten on the program and, and got through Bud's and I would have had anger issues and I would have had, you know, I wouldn't, you know, I would have issues when I get onto the battlefield, which a lot of them do. Then they get into a culture of guys that they're all savages. You know, they're into a platoon. They're a new guy. They're all savages. They all should die. And, you know, basically there's not a good one out there, which is false. As far as it, if you start just like they found out at, with task unit bruiser, if you start shooting innocent people, and you shoot an innocent old man out in the field and you kill him and then you roll him up in the rug and you throw him over the wall. <laughs> the community there who hates the terrorists themselves, but now they got a group of people who are acting like terrorists, you know, themselves killing their innocent people, just like the terrorists are doing. And uh, so they are going to, you know, basically respond. They are not going to put up to innocence being killed. And so now you got a young frog man who might have been corrupted a little bit at Bud's. Now he's in a platoon with guys that are doing things that, you know, that are, they don't, you know, that they're not happy with, that they would never do normally. But now they're on a little bit of steroids or, or something along the line. And they just like, well, shit, I want to be part of, you know, you know I want to be accepted in this platoon. I want to be part of the brotherhood. You know, and you want to prove yourself as a warrior. So they do some stuff that they're not proud of. And um, and they got that baggage. Then they get back and they then they realize, fuck, I was mentored by some shitty fucking team guys. And I've done some shit that I'm not proud of. And and they got that baggage that is and it messes up their personal life. And, you know, they start having wife and family issues. They start drinking a lot more. They start, you know, they've already crossed the line of steroids. And so they, you know, the drug issues start coming in. So this is how, you know, a good guy, a good young frogman, gets corrupted by the culture. And it's, it's up to team guys like I was mentored by that can steer you from a lot of that, you know, stuff. And unfortunately, some of these guys end up in platoons, just like Jocko's and uh, they fall step, you know, to it. And that's why these guys, aren't come that are on his podcast that aren't speaking out yeah and uh i'm i'm glad you're hitting on this man because it's not just the seal teams like i i was one of those guys right but it wasn't until later on in my career i came across the right leader that got me on the right path and what you're saying is a hundred percent correct like you 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 get in there and you see all these guys, you want to be like them. And next thing you know, you don't know who you are. And some of us make it out of there and some of us don't, right? I'm one of the lucky ones that's made it out. And that's that's what pushes me to do this as for as social media, because I know what the job can do to a young man. I know what the job does to, you know, these people's sons that that get thrown in there i because i was one of them so it's not so now it's like how do i do the best job that i can to make sure that these young men know what they're getting is, themselves into and the precautions that they can take to make sure that they survive because they don't know what they don't know. They see the accolades of, oh, this dude's badass, you know. But I'm like, you don't know the price that you're going to have to pay to become one of those guys. It's a hefty price. And if you don't know who you are going in, you damn sure won't know who you are coming out. So I'm glad you hit on that because it's not just an issue with the SEAL teams. It's an issue with Marsoc, Green Beret community, CCTs. It's everywhere, and it takes good leaders to mentor the younger generation to make sure that that cycle ends. So I'm glad you hit on that, Eric. Please continue. Yeah. 
So, you know, that's the culture that, you know, I, I would have been fighting against as far as, and luckily for you, you ran into somebody, you know, that basically got steered you from it. And so that's the whole time I was in that, uh, you know, what I took on my, as a responsibility is to look after these young frogmen that are coming in and trying to give them an example of, uh, you know, what kind of right looks like. Not that I made every decision perfect and not, you know, and I was flawless. I made mistakes here and there. Um, but I never sold out the trident or, or my brothers to try to make a buck. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are saying, Oh, you know, you know, how much money are you making off of this? I, I haven't made a dime. I won't make a dime. I have no intent other than basically exposing the truth for what it is and, and hopefully protecting in, you know, young frogmen that are you know, ready to go to buds, which my seal career, I loved, I will do it all over again. I, I would probably fight a little bit harder, um, you know, against this corruption when I was, you know, uh, you know, in because I didn't know the extent of how deep it went and that how many people were willing to sell out my fellow teammates for the dollar. And, uh, and I would have uh, fought harder to expose more of that than, um, than I did. But I was kind of held back because of, you know, when I did start voicing my opinion, you know, hey, the brotherhood, you know, we, we don't, you know, we don't tell, we don't go outside our command. We don't do this. You know, we keep it in house, you know, and they use the brotherhood as a method to kind of control people. And uh, that's the false brotherhood, the false brotherhood, the real brotherhood should encourage you to basically step up and tell the truth. And if you run into somebody that's saying, Hey, don't tell the truth that, you know, kind of makes us look bad or you don't want to, you know, go outside the command. If you're not getting results with inside your chain of command, realize you're not going to get, you know, results and you have to go outside of it and you have to be a bigger voice and you have to fight it because if you don't, other people are going to die down the line. And when they die, you're not going to feel good about yourself. And so you can either contribute, you can become part of the problem, or you can become part of the solution. And if you want to make the SEAL teams better, you better become part of the solution. And right now, there's a lot of us stepping forward and doing it, and they're providing me with great information. Uh, and right now, I got to be the spokesperson until they're ready. The rest of them are ready to put their face out there, which is coming soon. Um, so, you know, I'm encouraging more SEALs to stand up for what they know is right and what they know is true. And yeah, and I think you're you're doing a phenomenal job, Eric, as far as being the face until um, others feel comfortable um, with, you know, speaking down themselves because that's what it's going to take, right? Because at the end of the day, the, the recruitment tools that, you know, the SEAL teams have out here right now or the those guys on social media. Not that I'm saying that those guys are all bad, but just imagine how many guys have joined because of your Rob O'Neill, because of your Marcus Luttrell, right? Like those those guys see them on social media and they're like, oh, like that dude's a hero. I want to be like that guy just to find out that, hey, that dude's got some skeleton in the closet and he's living this false life, right? So, and I can't, support that and nor can you clearly um but eric uh before we uh, uh jump off here is there anything else you want to share um uh with the audience uh what do you have going on next and uh what would you like to see come out of these two podcasts i know we've mentioned hopefully getting these guys on camera and having a conversation with you like what else would you like to see come from this well, uh, keep the information coming to me, uh, you know, as far as there's, you know, some other bad apples out there that we know about. Um, and once we get more information, you know, as far as that, we're part of, you know, Tim Szymanski's, you know, cronies or whatever that he was able to get promoted and run up, you know, that have caused other incidences, you know, and we'll get into those in future podcasts, um, you know, that uh, so 
you know, keep the information coming to me, know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, uh, and I'm only trying to make the SEAL teams better and stronger uh, and not allow America to be duped by some of my comrades that are uh, painting a false narrative of who they are and that they were successful, you know, leaders on the battlefield, successful business owners when they were definitely not. And just because a person has a trident on their chest, um, doesn't mean they're an honorable person. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to question that, you know, and, you know, because if you accept them into your business or into your family and you don't actually peel back the onion a little bit, you might find out that, or you accept them into another agency, you know, you, because they got to see, you know, a trident on their chest, you might find out that this person has got a lot of issues that they um, and why they left the teams and they didn't leave the teams on good terms. Uh, now, um, Eric, now I know there there are some good uh, SEAL platforms out there. Um, I'm not going to name any of them, but what what's your message to those guys? Because they are on social media um, and they are doing uh, some good things. And, you know, based on my research, at least those guys are legit. Like what what message would you uh, send out to, to 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 those guys as far as their responsibility, uh, I guess, to the community that you guys were both part of? Yeah, so they know what I'm saying is true. Uh, they need to start saying the same thing. Yeah, and uh, and why haven't they? Now I know because um, I get this comment a, a a lot, right? It's it's hey, in the community, like we we eat our own. Like, what would you say to the folks that that see that as a reason why these guys aren't really um, exposing any of this stuff, right? Because some some will say, hey, you know, like we shouldn't be fighting, you know, out in the public, or hey, we should be doing this behind closed doors, or hey, it's 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 not right. Like, what what would you say to those guys? Because I have my take on it is, if we don't hold each other accountable, then who will? Regardless of of you know what is being or the lack of actions that is taking place right um, right now, like if we haven't been in that community don't hold each other accountable in this space right then who will right i'm sure there was other ways that you know other seals tried taking care of it in house before you know these guys made it out here but it did it clearly didn't work right so what would you say to those people yeah as far as you know it so we we had a lot of great guys get out of the teams because of what they saw as this corruption. And they saw like on one of Andy Stump's um, podcasts, you know, he says he never saw this corruption. You know, it was with Matt, um, Matt Cole. He was doing an interview with Matt Cole and Matt Cole's book, as far as. Um, Code over country. Uh, Code over country. Thank you. And, um, you know, and it exposes a whole bunch of stuff that happened at, you know, Andy Stumps, you know, as far as a uh, team that he, one of the teams he was at, his first six. And he said that he never saw it himself. But the one thing he said that he did see was corruption in the awards and corruption in the uh, advancement. So if you are controlling who gets awards and you are controlling who gets promoted, you are controlling who gets in charge of the combat operations. And when these guys are in charge of combat operations, they fail miserably. So, you know, so he, I don't know how he didn't see the, all this other corruption, you know, that's, you know, his, his spectrum that he was looking at, but he did see that. And if he did see that, then call it out. And then, you know, as far as, and tell us how you saw that, because by exposing that, you're going to expose a whole bunch of stuff that's going to show that, hey, it, it's it's a good old boy network. It's not about top performers, you know, going to the top. And that's why so many great guys left the SEAL teams because they saw this corruption and they saw the wrong guys getting advanced. They saw guys with multiple DUIs in charge of combat operations that couldn't tactically make good calls 
and they get good guys killed. Look how many, you know, if you look at Roberts Ridge, how many people died there? Then you look at Red Wings, how many people died there? Then you look at Extortion 17, how many good guys died there? And so did any other organization have so many failures, you know, with big amount of guys dying like that? And if you don't think that's a cultural problem and it's a leadership problem, then you're wrong. And if it takes me to expose it and, you know, you know, and call it out, then and bring light to it for the American public, then, you know, more people need to speak up and say what I'm saying. You yeah, know, it, yeah. it's, it is what it is. Yeah. And I know it's difficult because calling people out is a skill. It's an art that I had to learn um, how to, f you know, uh, finesse. Right. Because it started in the teams where at first, you know, it's it's a little gut wrenching because you're like, man, like, I don't want to start a confrontation. I don't want to. But the more I did it and it started off with like, hey, man, can I talk to you outside for a minute? You know, and then hey, like what you did there was was kind of messed up, like. Please don't do that again. Like, you know, just just being tactful, right? And then I got better and better at it. And then as guys started holding each other accountable, calling people, it became the norm as far as the culture on my specific team, every team that I've been on. And I brought that with me the entire way, you know? And then I get on social media and it's like calling people out on here. Like, I, I, I use the same tack, right? Like, I would, on on social media, like, I'll, I'll send the guy... A message through Instagram, right? Um, I I did it with a couple of um, like I did it with 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 Taylor Kavanaugh. I did it with you know Mr. Balling, like all seals, right? Like I'll text him. I'd be like, hey man, I'm getting ready to do a segment on my YouTube channel. This is what I'm gonna talk about. This is what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna say. I just don't want you to be ambushed, right? Um, and this is why I'm saying those things. And I let them know ahead of time. And mo for the most part. It's been received pretty well, right? Even, you know, the first one we did about Jocko. I don't know him. He's. I sent him a message to Instagram. I was like, hey, man, um, you know, me and this retired SEAL, we just did a podcast and you're in it. Like, here's the link. If you have any issues, please let us know. You know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 it's something that could be done uh, with ease if we make it the norm out here in this space, right? Everything that we learn within the teams, regardless of branches, we can easily take that with us to the social media space um, and lead by example, essentially, right? So it, it is something that could be done. Um, like I said, Andy's really good dude because I saw some, some back and forth or some... Um, he was on a podcast and he said something about a former SEAL and he came out and he apologized, right? He was like, hey, what I said was not correct. Like, I, apo I apologize for it and it won't, you know, like, I misspoke. You know, like, that's, that's the type of attack and that's the type of actions that, that, that we need to take out here because it shows the audience that, hey, we do make mistakes, we own them, and we apologize when necessary. And I think that's, that's a good way to go about doing this. So, um, hopefully... Uh, more and more of it starts to get done and and we don't give the public a reason to doubt us or to question us going forward you know yeah it's that as you were talking brought another point up uh for me that uh you know there were some of the comments out there because i you know i i kind of called out some of our guys that are given our sops and ttps over the in, open internet you know as far as you know how to clear a room how to do this how to do that and some patriots out there are just like, well, why shouldn't we get that type of training? And I'm all about them getting that type of training. You know, the problem that I have is that they're not the only ones. There's no, you can't vet who is basically clicking and learning about this stuff. And there are, you know, terrorist organizations and criminals out there that this is, you know, what they live in. You know, they want you know, they might get raided, you know, more often, or they might have to go against police or military. So they want to know how the police and military are going to do certain things so that they can be better prepared. I'm not talking about trying to hold information back from patriots. If you want to get that type of training, there's plenty of places to go get it. And so you show up at that training site to get it, and they can vet you, they can make sure that, hey, you don't, 
you don't fit their narrative of a terrorist. You, you, we know that this is your address. You've been living here in the United States for this long and you've done, you know, and you're just trying to protect your family, which is all great. Get that training, you know, and I, and those guys should, you know, should provide you with the training. My problem is over the open internet, internet with people that aren't being vetted and the criminals and the terrorists are getting the same level of training. And that is going to hurt my fellow teammates, fellow Green Berets, fellow Rangers, and police force, you know, out there. So that's not who I'm talking about, you know, as far as, you know, not getting the training. Or I'm talking about making sure those people don't get that training. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying, Eric. Um, well, we'll close it off, Eric, um, if you don't mind. Uh, if you have anything else you want to talk about that we didn't talk about, please do so now and then just let everyone know where they can find you if they have any additional information for you. Yeah, I'm going to leave you you my Proton email because this is a secure email and I think it's a, a great way to get information back and forth so that they feel protected and I feel protected. And I hope that you can tell by, you know, you know, I got a lot of information from other people, of course, some of it I knew myself, but I haven't exposed anybody that does not want to be exposed yet. So you can trust me that if you're not willing to come out personally yourself, and I will make sure that there's, it doesn't get attributed back to you if you're not ready for that. So don't be afraid to reach out to me and, um, and get me more information so that we can clean up the teams and make it the honorable organization that, you know, that I grew up in and that I was mentored in and which made me, you know, the man I am today and which I'm extremely proud of uh, my time in the teams and what I got accomplished. Yeah. And the last thing I'm going to say is, you know, you know, when I first started this pod, you know, the podcast with, you know, the anti-hero, um, Joe Price's dad was alive and, um, and he got to hear guys, he got to see that podcast and guys standing up for his son and that what he know was false. And he had finally had team guys saying exactly what he felt in his heart to be true. Um, unfortunately we never got to expose it all the way. He, he just passed two days ago and, um, but he went with knowing that finally his son's death is going to be come out to be mean, you know, to be known that it wasn't a suicide and that his son probably died fighting the same exact corruption that I've been fighting for years. And, that investigation and, and several other supposed suicides uh, and these gold star families need to not be afraid to start asking questions. If you feel like there's something wrong in your heart, something's not right with that story, you need to start digging and pulling on those threads to get to the bottom of it. And if you want to reach out to me, I will give you everything I can give you uh, to help you with your fight. Yeah, that's uh, um, um, uh, horrible that he passed away. Uh, may he rest in peace. And I know Matt's going to keep on uh, 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 taking that good fight on un until he gets the answers that he's looking for. Uh, but yes, we'll put your email in the uh, uh, description box, uh, Eric, just in case anybody wants to reach out to you. Um, again, man, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Um, until next time, guys, if you have anything for Eric, like I said, let us know in the comment section below or hit him up on email uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, until next time, guys, take care of yourselves.